If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. The question states that this population is growing according to a logistic model, and the logistic model is defined by this equation right here. And our first task in solving the question is to actually come up with the value of A, and we can very easily do that by applying the second equation associated with the logistic model. Now, just so that we have our symbols straight, when the question says that we have a carrying capacity of 10,000, then it is telling us that the value of M is equal to 10,000. So M is the carrying capacity. In addition, we have an initial population of 1,000. So that means that P sub zero is equal to 1,000. And with those values, we can plug in to the equation for A and solve for A. So in the numerator, we end up with 9,000 divided by then 1,000. And of course, then the value of A is equal to nine. So once we have this value of A, we can actually go back and plug it into the logistic equation given right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We've also gone ahead and plug in 10,000 for M as well. So this is our logistic model, but our next task becomes solving for the value of K. And we can do that by looking at a so-called initial condition. So for example, the question notes that the population grows to 2,500 after one year. So this means that the population at a time of one year is going to equal 2,500. So we're going to take those data and plug them into our logistic model. So basically the P of T becomes 2,500 and then the value of T will become one. Now in the exponent, we have negative K times one. So that's just negative K. So we can simplify that a little bit. Now we have enough data plugged in to solve for the value of K. So the question is, well, how do we do that? Let's first clear our workspace. Next, we may wish to write the 2500 over a one. And what's kind of neat about that is it allows us to reciprocate both sides of the equation. So if we reciprocate the left side, we have one over 2500. And if we reciprocate the right hand side, we're basically just flipping it upside down, giving us this equation here. Now to continue solving, we would multiply both sides by 10,000. So that the 10,000s cancel on the right hand side. On the left, we have 10,000 times one over 2,500, that of course is equal to four. Next, we'll subtract one from both sides, divide both sides by nine, so three divided by nine gives us one third. And then we will apply the natural log to both sides. And by doing that on the right hand side, we will have the natural log of E raised to the power of negative K. We might remember our logarithm properties that allow us to drag that exponent down in front to create a multiple. So we have negative K multiplied by the natural log of E, but the natural log of E is just one. So negative K times one is just negative K. On the other side, we're going to apply a log property to expand that. We know that the logarithm of one third would be the logarithm of one minus the logarithm of three. The logarithm of one is zero. So now we have negative LN of three is equal to negative K. We divide both sides of that equation by negative one, and we can see that K is equal to the natural log of three. Now that we have the value of K equaling the natural log of three, we're gonna plug the natural log of three in for K into this logistic equation. So at this stage, we've basically completed our logistic model. Now we just have to answer the very specific question, which is what will the population be after another three years? Now read that carefully. It doesn't say what's the population after three years, it's after another three years. So. Already one year has passed, another three years passing would bring the total time up to four years. So just be careful there. We do have to plug four in for T, which we will do right now. Now we could punch this into a calculator to get our answer, but we're going to do a little bit of simplifying. Let's take a look at this as an aside. That negative LN of three is really a negative one multiplied by the LN of three, which in turn is multiplied by four. We can actually multiply the negative one by the four to make a negative four. So we would have E to the LN of three multiplied by negative four. But interestingly, we can rewrite that even further to simplify. We can write that as E to the LN of three all of which is raised to the negative four. And that does work because recall, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply those powers. So if we multiply negative four by the LN of three, that would give us this exact same outcome right here. And for some reason that all just disappeared on me. Isn't that lovely? So why did we do that? Well, it's because the E to the LN of three simplifies, the E and the LN cancel. So you're left with just three to the power of negative four. 
Now, of course, that simplifies further because that's just one over three to the positive four and three to the positive four is going to be 81. So you have one over 81. So that little aside shows us that that green term that we highlighted is equal to one over 81. So let's put that in. Now, of course, when we multiply nine by one over 81, we get nine over 81, but nine over 81 would simplify to just one ninth. So on the bottom, we have one plus one ninth, but that's just 10, excuse me, nine ninths plus one ninth, which is 10 ninths on the bottom. So now you have 10,000 into 10 ninths. We just do a little, what I call keep change flip. So keep the 10,000, change the problem to multiplication and then flip the fraction upside down. So now we have 90,000 divided by 10, which is indeed 9,000. So this is the correct answer to the question.